So let's learn some simple assembly instructions which operate on the stack. And so if we go back and look at our Hello World example when compiled and disassembled on Mac OS, we start with the very first assembly instruction, push. And later on, we see a pop instruction. So I said that data gets pushed and popped onto and off of the stack. And so those sound like they probably have to do with that. Also seeing the same assembly on a Linux compiled and disassembled thing, we also see push and pop. And so while we may not yet know what exactly what they do, we know that they're perfectly balanced as all things should be. But we did not actually see push and pop in the Visual Studio generated assembly. So what's up with that? Well, I'm going to start a mystery list of different things that we're gonna have to come back to later. So for now, we're gonna say, you know, we don't know exactly why GCC or Kling's Hello Worlds have push and pop instructions, but Visual Studio doesn't. But by putting this on the list, I promise we'll get back to it later and explain it. But for now, let's just understand how the assembly instructions work. So the first one, push, pushes a quad word or eight bytes onto the stack. So when a push occurs, it automatically decrements the stack pointer RSP by eight because you've just pushed eight bytes of data onto the stack. And so the stack grows towards low addresses, the enemy's plate is down, and so RSP needs to go down by eight. Now in 64-bit execution mode, there are a couple different versions of push. The first one is that you can just push the value from a 64-bit register. And the second one is you can push a 64-bit value from memory where the memory is given in a special form called RMX that I'll talk about next. There's also actually a version which can push a 32-bit immediate or just constant value onto the stack, but that gets into complicated exceptions. So I'm intentionally simplifying and we're gonna just pretty much ignore that version of push and pretend these are the only two versions. But later on, when you learn to read the manual, you can go back and see all the you know, caveats that have to go along with that, which is why I skipped it. So the RMX form of addressing. So I completely made up this term RMX to refer to places in the Intel manual where you see it saying RM8, RM16, RM32, or RM64. So for instance, in the push, the manual is ultimately the, the true source of like, you know, what is possible and what is not. And, you know, here's those instructions that push immediate constants that I said I want to ignore because they have to deal with a bunch of caveats. But the thing I want to focus on is RMX form. So push has an RM16, an RM32, and an RM64. And certain versions of it, like the 32, are not actually valid in 64-bit mode. But you're going to learn to read this uh, read the manual later on in this class. So for now, we just say, when I talk about the assembly instructions, I'll just say, you know, it takes an RMX form. So what is an RMX form? Well, it is a way to specify either a register or a memory value. And again, either, you know, 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits long. So syntactically, I have to tell you that in Intel syntax, square brackets means to treat the value within as a memory address and fetch the value from that address and pull it out. So it's like dereferencing a pointer. So later on here, I'll show you some square bracket forms. So RMX could just turn into a plain register like RBX. It could be a square bracket form where it says, take the value in RBX, treat it as a memory address, dereference it, the square brackets are dereference it, and pull the value out of that. And that's the value which is gonna be used instead. So we won't use the value of RBX, we'll use the value pointed to by RBX. So that's, those are the two simple forms. Just, you know, use the literal value in a register or use the value if you take that register, treat it as address and grab from that address. But RMX is complicated and it has more complicated forms such as register, take the register and then add some other register multiplied by some X. The X can be literally the number one, two, four, or eight. It can't have any other values. And in this form, you can essentially think of it like the first value is a base, the second value is an index, and the x is a scale, where you're essentially scaling by 1, 2, 4, 8. And then the most complicated form is this base plus index times scale plus displacement. So some base added to some value times 1, 2, 4, 8, and then plus a displacement. 
Now there's then further two different forms of this where the y could be encoded in the assembly instruction as a single byte value. So we've got you know, 0 to 255, or it could be encoded in a four byte value, so 0 to 4 billion. So RMX is a pretty complicated way of addressing memory locations, but you can see how they can kind of reach into and pluck from memory kind of anywhere within uh, a large four gigabyte space at a time. So also you can imagine that this base plus index time scale plus displacement has natural applicability to things like multidimensional arrays, uh, arrays of structs and so forth, right? So if you had you know, a simple four by four array, you can imagine that the base would start at the base, the zero zeroth entry in the thing. And if you were trying to get to, you know, square brackets one, square brackets zero, that square brackets one implies that, you know, you've gone a full four values into the thing and now you're at the fifth value. And so the displacement might be four times, you know, whatever the size of your elements is. And so you've essentially skipped four times that forward, and then the index would be zero and the scale would be, again, you know, whatever the size is of the elements of the array. So this, this can be useful for that, and that's why Intel made this more complicated version of addressing. So this is, RMX is going to be a recurring thing throughout the class, and in the future when I'm giving you your very simplified view of how assembly instructions work, if I say that it supports access to memory, I basically mean that memory is going to be encoded as an RMX form. When I say RMX, I mean something that could be as simple as that simple R of a register, or could be as complicated as this base plus index time scale plus displacement. So here's a couple quick examples of that. You could have push straight up just normal register, and push, take that register, grab to memory, grab some value out of memory, and then push it onto the stack. And the same thing for different versions of the same thing. You could fill in any sort of different general purpose register for these encoding values. All right, one other thing that is specific to my version of the class, I use this backtick symbol when I'm writing 64-bit numbers in the class. This is a thing that is only used on WinDebug, which is not a debugger that we're actually going to be using in this class. But I find it super useful because when you start writing 64-bit numbers, you can lose track of whether you have the right number of digits or not. So if I write something like hex 12345678123456678 with the backtick in the middle, that's just to indicate it's a 64-bit value and that helps me keep track of that I'm writing the right number of digits. So what would the push instruction actually do when it's executed? So let's imagine that we have something like push RAX. Let's say the register RAX was holding the value three and RSP pointing at the top of the stack, let's say it was pointing at 14 FE08. So here's the location in memory, here's the current value at the top of the stack and the stack grows towards low addresses. So if this is what the stack looked like before, then after the execution of the push RAX assembly instruction, we will see that first of all, the RSP value changed. So it went from 14 FE08 to 14 FE00 because the stack pointer is automatically decremented by eight. It's gone from here down to here. And furthermore, it is now still pointing at the top of the stack, the last bit of data that is actually used on the stack which is the three that was pushed as part of the push RAX. All right, so how do we balance out that push? Well, we have the pop assembly instruction. So it pops a value from the stack. And so in 64-bit mode, it can either pop into a 64-bit register or it can pop into a memory address as given in RMX form. So what would it look like if we executed an assembly instruction such as pop RAX? Well, RAX might have some value before the pop and RSP would have some value before the pop. But after the assembly instruction is actually executed, then the three from the stack is going to be popped off into the RAX register, overwriting what was already there. And automatically, as a side effect of the pop assembly instruction, RSP will be incremented by eight. And so this went from 14 FE00 to 14 FE08. Furthermore, this location for our purposes is now considered undefined. I said before, in reality, data does exist past the end of the stack. And so this three value will literally be here still. It's not like the, you know, compile. It's not like the compiler generates assembly instructions in order to like zero this value. It's not like the hardware automatically zeroes the value. The memory is still there, 
It's just that properly executing compilers should never access memory beyond the top of the stack. So a quick throwback to the 32-bit world, because even though this class is about 64-bit assembly, I do want you to still get a sense of how 32-bit assembly works. If you are executing in 32-bit mode, push and pop will add and remove 32-bit values at a time rather than 64 bits, and thus they increment or decrement RSP by 4 rather than 8. Similarly, if you happen to be executing in 16-bit mode, because I said that Intel still supports backwards compatibility and actually still starts up in 16-bit mode, it's going to be the same thing, two bytes at a time instead of four bytes at a time. So great, we now know two more assembly instructions. So we knew no up, and we now know push, and we now know pop. And just like that, three assembly instructions, we're already well over 20%, and we're well on our way to mastery of assembly.